Enhance your experience by becoming a supporting member. Gain access to unseen videos and video requests. Three day free trial by visiting zionmembership.com. Minds. Empaths. These narcissists that are involved in your life, they knew your worth, they knew your value since they, since they laid eyes on you. They've known what you are. You see, a lot of these individuals studied you from a distance, right? How did you meet the narcissist that was involved in your life? Did you meet them on social media? Did you bump, on, bump into them on the street? Um, did you meet them for a friend? All of these strategies that could have been the um, that could have arisen in you developing a relationship with this narcissist in your life, right? All of them have uh, a place and time for study, right? Say you met them in the street and you think it was just a sudden bumping into them. How many times did they see you go to that bakery on your lunch break when you didn't see them or you didn't notice them? How many times did they just happen to be in that same location where you was or when you went for your break to have a cigarette and you wasn't really paying attention to your surroundings they were paying attention they knew you went on your cigarette break at 10 30 so they would make sure that they go on a cigarette break at 10 30 or they would make sure they go to the bakery or the lunch the lunch the lunch shack at that same time that you go out at that same time right so it may have appeared to you as a bumping into each other in the street, right? It may have appeared that way to you. But in the narcissist's mind, they were studying you from a distance, right? The same goes if you met them for a friend, right? Say you met them for a friend. They could have found out information about you. They could have studied you from a distance. They could have heard information through the grapevine. And they studied you from a distance, right? The same goes for dating apps or social media, right? Perhaps if it was a message in social media, they could have just stalked your profile and read your profile and seen, seen what you're about, you know, studied your words and stuff like that. If it was a swiping, matching uh, dating app, then it's highly likely that when they matched with you, right, they they studied you on the early interactions, you know, so the early interactions, they would have studied your response times, you know, how quick you're responding, everything they're storing in their memory banks, right? And they're searching for someone who they believe can fit that role to provide them the supply they're after, right? So they, they noticed, for example... The way you communicate it. In all, in all situations, whether you bumped in them, into them in the street, inverted commas, whether you met them through a, a friend, right? Or you met them on a, so on, on a dating app, right? You know, they, 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 they ran analysis on you, on the way you communicated, on the way you carried yourself. You know, even through dating apps, there can be kind of body language, not body language, but like there can be body language through the messaging and the way you display yourself right um the matching ones is a bit more instantaneous but there are other dating apps where you message each other and you read each other's profiles and stuff like that but even on the matching ones they would have read your profile they would have seen your interests they may have seen if you're looking for a long-term relationship you know th th this is why you know dating apps for example is filled with narcissists but so is out in the street you know, out in the street, it's not hard for you to go out there and get another narcissist, right? And that's why I don't want any of you hurt or upset or broken hearted or feeling betrayed because it's really not hard, difficult for you to go out there and get involved in another narcissistic relationship, right? With what you went through. It's really not difficult. You can find another person. They, they might even be worse than the narcissist that was involved in your life, right? They might even be worse. You can go out there and find that, you know? I know you might think it's difficult. You might think, oh, dating again after a long-term relationship is difficult. You know, it's hard to get back out there and start dating again and stuff like this. I'm telling you, you will get out there 
into the dating world, right? You'll meet someone new, you'll, th you'll think they're okay, you'll think they're genuine, and before you know it, it'll be another narcissist. This is it. It's so, it's so simple to find another narcissist, toxic individual in this world. It's so, so simple. But what I'm saying to you is, right, even before you were consciously aware, you were leaving an everlasting impression on this narcissist's mind, heart and soul. Whatever's left of it. The dusty, decrepit, dusty weirdo soul that they have, right? And dusty mind that they have. Yes, you left an everlasting impression on that, you know? Because through their analysis on you, right? Testing your temperament, body language cues, the way you communicate, the way you converse, feeling your energy, they can feel your energy, right? This left an everlasting impression. They knew you were slightly different, right? Even if they didn't really know you as an empath initially, they knew you were slightly different. And the more they began to dig deeper, they began to unearth that you are someone who is pure. You are someone who is full of light. They may not have given it the terminology of an empath if they're not awakened to the narcissist and empath kind of spectrum, but they would have analyzed it thinking, okay, this is a keeper. This is someone, this is a keeper, right? So I'm telling you, don't doubt the impression you made on the narcissist, right? And you never get a second chance to make first impressions, you know? In life, you never get a second chance to make first impressions. And first impressions count, right? That's what you need to understand. First impressions aren't forgotten about. They can't just fade, right? They can't just fade. So, you know... Don't doubt this impression that you left on this narcissist mind, heart and soul. Don't doubt it for a second. Now, I know, right, may have come to a bitter end. You may have gone through a, a brutal discard or a brutal reverse discard or some chaotic behavior. So you had to cut the narcissist off. There may have been a foul exchange of words. There may have been a disagreement. There may have been, uh, you know, them disappearing out of your life, you know, um, stonewalling you, giving you silent treatment, you know, you may have been put through some real horrific abuse, right, you know, um, coming after the, the whole abuse cycle that you go through in the narcissistic relationship anyway, like the devaluation, the gaslighting, the smear campaigns, all of that, you may have been put through some real brutal abuse at the end of the relationship, right, so it leaves you questioning, you know, did they ever feel this way about you, did they ever you know, uh, did they ever feel, were they ever in love with you? This will start to go through your minds. Did they ever love you? Was anything real? Now, listen, they loved you to the best of their ability. They can't love properly. Not, not the love that you're searching for. Not that, that true, authentic, transparent, genuine, beautiful love. Tranquil love. They can't give you that. They can love in a weird, obsessive way. Right? And they loved you from before you even knew who they was. Right. Like I said, when you went on that cigarette break and they was analyzing you, they was they was mesmerized and admiring you, admiring your beauty and, you know, the way you smoke your cigarette or the or the way you eat your sandwich. Right. I'm telling you, they was they was watching you. They're weirdos. They're, they're absolute weirdos. That's what I'm saying. They have stalkerish traits. Right. Whether it's cyber stalking, whether, whether they're constantly looking at your profile online or physical stalking, like I'm mentioning, where, they, where they're putting themselves in situations to be in your vicinity. Right. You know, this is what they're like. You know, this is what they're like. Right. And these are the, these are these strong, very strong first impressions that you had on them prior to even words exchanged. Right. You had very, very strong impressions on them. You know, they were studying you. From the moment they knew about your existence, they were studying you like a PhD, you know, like a degree. They were studying you and studying you and studying you. And this is why I'm saying after you go through the abuse, right, you start to question. It's like not question your own sanity, but like you start to question did they ever feel that way? You know, because they put you through such hurt and abuse, right? They put you through such devastating abuse. You start to have a bit of a problem in your mind. And you're like, 
you know, what was real, what wasn't real, what, what was like, and you're a bit confused, you know, it, it can leave you a bit off balance and a bit confused, you know, because you, you don't know, you know, they, they made out they want nothing to do with you or they've discarded you or they've given you silent treatment or they've abused you in, a, in some horrible way, you know, so you've had to cut them off, you know, and, and you're thinking like, ha, 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 how, you know, what, what the hell was that person? It can leave the chosen one, the empath, very, very confused. Please press the like and the subscribe button. Help your brother out. It'll take two seconds of your time. Just like this video showed up for you. Help with the algorithm and help it show up for someone else that may be in a time of need and may need this video to help them. Thank you so much. But, you know, this can leave you confused, like I was saying, you know, because it's such, you know, going from the baiting, you know, they do a lot of baiting at the beginning. People call it love bomb. But these things that they were love bombing you about, because I'll say love bomb because a lot of people call it love bomb, right? But it's actually baiting, right? It's actually picking key characteristics out about you. Things that are apparent, things that are real, things that are true, right? Things that are about your your persona or the way you look or the way you dress or the way you think or your mentality. Like They, they pick out things about you and they love bomb you on that. But it's baiting. They, they, you know, they, 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 they pick out actual apparent things about you, right? And with a hidden hand and a motive, they use those very things to get your guard down, right? So you go from this love bomb to this brutal ending, and that's what makes you start doubting. Did they ever really feel that way about you in the beginning? Now, they did feel that way. Now, look, as time proceeds through the relationship, towards the bitter end, right? Going towards the bitter end when they went east, or no, you went east, and they went west, right? Say, right? At that bitter end, some of the narcissists, now I'm not trying to trigger you now, some of the narcissists will actually believe, please, I'm not trying to trigger you now, you just bear with me. Some of the narcissists that are involved in your life will actually believe they're going on to better things, right? And the reason why they think they're going on to better things is because they landed you, someone like you, right? They think that they can find better. That's their fundamental mistake, right? You were their last blessing. But they, they get delusional and they get an inflated sense of self through the duration of the relationship of being with you. So they think they can go on and do better, right? That's some of the narcissists. I don't know what it's like in your actual personal circumstance. But the alternative option is narcissists will withdraw from you. They'll discard you or something like that to punish you, right? To get revenge on you. It could have been for narcissistic injuries, for instance. It could be you know, going cold on you to get a, more of a response from you to make you more engaged in the relationship, right? Or they could have felt you slipping away, so they pull away. You know, it's a tactic. It's an old school tactic that they use. You know, they'll pull away to make you chase after them. But either, either or, right? If you were someone that you feel like the narcissist involved in your life actually went on to think they could do better, they will get out in the world, right? And very, very, very quickly, they will realize, you know, that you can't be replaced. And they will start to realize your significance and the void that they feel in their lives. It will become very apparent. Also, if you're utilizing a no contact method, so you're not communicating with them, you're not feeding them no supply, they will feel your absence so, so much. On the flip side, the ones of the, the narcissists that are involved in your life that have done this as an agenda and a motive to go cold on you, so you chase after them, if you utilize no contact as soon as possible in both of these scenarios, if you utilize no contact, right, this is going to make them, uh, you know, feel like a complete fuck up, to, to, to put it quite frank, you know, because it was all a game, you know, you're not playing that game, you know. They wanted to go cold on you. You're not chasing after them. Or if you did, you just chased for a little bit and they were giving you the cold shoulder, you know, and you just said, all right, go, you know, in both of these scenarios, if you can just be like, yeah, go, go away, 
You know, but the narcissist, oh, narcissist, you think you can go on and do better? Go about your business and try and do better. Know your value, know your worth, chosen one, right? You need to have this mindset as long as, please say this video has come up to you in a good time so you can use it. Or even if this, this video has come up to you in the future, right? And this has happened in the past, you can look back in retrospect and you can realize this is the life that they ran into. You know, they, they went down a dark road. They don't find better. You know, like... I read a statistic today, apparently there's only 2% of the world that's empaths. I don't know how accurate that, that, that statistic is, because even the statistic of, when you look at the statistic of narcissists that are involved in the world, it's clearly a lot higher, right? So there's a lot of undiagnosed narcissists that aren't in that statistic. But they say that empaths are only 2%. But from that, you can, whether it's more, you know, or whatnot, right? What you can kind of extract from that is 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 coming across a true empath is a rarity, right? It's, it's, it's something that narcissists don't come across every day. Just like you can go out into the world and you can find another narcissist if you want to. Today, tomorrow, in an hour, you could log on to a dating app and meet someone in an hour. I'm telling you, be another narcissist, right? They can't find someone of your level that equates to your worth, they cannot find it. So they go through the re-idealization process, you know, and that's why you need to let absence be your friend. The quiet times, the non-communication, them going on with someone new, all of this is putting the power in your court. I'm telling you chosen ones, empaths, all of this is putting the power in your court. I'm telling you, when they go off with someone else, you need to smile. You need to celebrate. You need to be like, oh, my God. You know, it's going to go to ruins. You know, they're going to go on with someone new, right? And you need to celebrate that moment. You know, even celebrate the discard. You know, if you're discarded or you've just been discarded, I'm telling you, when, when the anniversary comes up the following year or whatnot, celebrate that day of the day of the discard, you know, or celebrate the day that they reverse discard you or celebrate the day that you cut them off. You know, you don't need to be sad about it, you know, because their lives are going nowhere. Their lives are going absolutely nowhere. They're going to run in to new supplies that don't equate to you. They're going to realize you're irreplaceable. Some of them are going to hoover you. Some of them are going to play so stubborn. They're going to try and bait you. They're going to do different things to try and bait you. They're going to post things on social media. They're going to do things with their profile pictures. They're going to do these things, right? I heard someone in the comment section saying that. Is them changing a profile picture a hoover? In some cases... It's like an indirect hoover. They're just baiting you, right? They're doing that with you in mind, you know? They're doing that with you in mind, you know? They're doing these things. Whatever they're doing, right? They do all of these behaviors. Some of them will come with a direct hoover, you know? It may not be a declaration of love, but it will be a direct contact hoover. Other ones come with the indirect hoovers. You know, they, they beat around the bush and they, they come sideways and they, they try and draw you out, you know? At the end of the day, they know, you know, when the ones do the direct hoovers, they know shit. They, they, they all know. They're like, fuck, all of them, regardless if they come with a direct hoover or indirect hoover, you know, they're just playing games, trying to bait you out, doing these indirect hoovers. They know that they fucked up seriously, but they don't know how to build the bridge back across to you. You see, you as a chosen one, an empath, if you was in an authentic relationship with someone and for whichever reason things went south and you decided to move on with someone else and you realized it was a huge mistake you may reach out to that person whether that person re-engages with you or not and you'd say you know what i made a huge mistake you wouldn't have no what's the word i'm looking for you wouldn't bear no grudge you wouldn't have you'd be humble about this thing you wouldn't you wouldn't you wouldn't you know you wouldn't feel no way right you wouldn't be stubborn and you'd say to the person you know what? i seriously fucked up i shouldn't have treated you that way you know, I understand that you maybe you're getting on with your life now, but if you ever want to meet up and have a coffee or sit down and talk, you know, and you do an authentic gesture, 
regardless. And, you, and in your mind, you'd probably say to yourself, you know, regardless if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't work out, you can understand that maybe you made a mistake. And you'd learn to live with that mistake. This, these lot can't learn to live with that mistake. They're going to have to learn to live with that mistake, right? It is a huge mistake, right? They, they seriously know your significance, right? Your significance becomes so powerful and so strong. And that's why I'm telling you, celebrate the time when they go away. Celebrate the time when they go on the new supply. You don't need to be in tears. You don't need to be sad. I'm telling you, they're getting reminders every day that these people are not you, right? Every waking moment, even if they haven't gone on to a new supply, and they're without a supply. You know? We're going on like all of these are a catch. You know? Yeah, they try and tame supplies. And they try and line up supplies. And they go to supply after supply after supply. But they don't make good decisions. Right? And that's why I'm telling you on your journey. Do things different. You know? You can go out there today or tomorrow. And find a narcissist. If you really want to. Right? It's, it, it's not hard. It's not difficult. Right? But you're looking for something genuine. You're looking for something pure. And that's what you need to set your scope on. That's what you need to aim for. Something real. Something authentic. And if you see any red flags or you see any signs, disengage. Remove your heart and soul from the, from the endeavor. Right? Remove your soul and cut soul ties immediately, you know, from these individuals. Right? If you notice any signs, you know. Signs will arise. Especially if you've been through narcissistic abuse before and another narcissist tries to play some game with you, it's so blatant. It's so, so blatant. You'll just be like, oh my God, it's another narcissist. You know what I'm saying? You just see it. You just see it. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, there's plenty of narcissists that come along your path after the narcissist that is involved in your life. You'll, you, you'll come across plenty of other narcissists. You will do. Maybe some of you will actually just find the chosen one or empath you know, that you can unite with and that will be a beautiful thing. But many of you will run into other narcissists and um, other narcissists. And I made a video today about empaths that pre present themselves. No, narcissists, sorry, covert narcissists that present themselves as empaths. You know, so you need to be wary of that as well. There's, there's a lot of narcissists that present themselves as empaths. They play the victim role very well. You know, they, they, play, that, they play that role. So you need to watch out for that. But... um. Just understand, don't doubt the impression you left on the narcissist. This is something they're going to have to live with lifelong. You know, this is something they're going to have to live with lifelong. It's not something they're going to get over very easily. You know, they're not going to get over this very easily. It's going to be an incredible struggle for them. You know, um, they're always going to remember you. You know, you're always going to be that person that they don't have, you know. So please, none of you, accept that. don't accept the hoover. Don't let them back into your life, you know. If someone walks out of your life or someone treats you so badly, you have to cut them off. They don't deserve to be in your life, right? They don't deserve to be in your life, right? And don't doubt the impression. The negative energy, energy tries to come in and tries to misconstrue your mind and makes you doubt yourself and your own ability. Listen, as I said to you in the beginning segment, these people was watching you from before you even knew it. <laughs> they was watching you from before you even knew it You know what I'm saying Like I mentioned when you used to go on a cigarette break at work Or go to the lunch van at work or the snack shop You know what I'm saying They would come out at the same time to bump into you You know what I mean If it was a friend for a friend They would, they would, they would, they would, they would, they would find out information about you You know what I'm saying What's this person like What's this? They, was, they was gossiping about you from before you even knew And if it was on a dating app with profiles And they could read your information They were studying that If it was a match and you just matched and they assessed you when you first started interacting. But they also watched your profile and analysed your profile as well to try to interpret enough information. This is what they've done. They were studying you. You were taking this as a genuine, as a person that is of interest, you know, that you want a relationship with. You were just taking it, you know, freely and openly and transparently and truthfully and everything like that. And genuinely, these had motives and agendas and everything like that, right? But listen, they will never forget the impression you made on them. You never get a, another chance to make first impressions, right? You never get another chance to make first impressions. And those first impressions you made on this narcissist involved in your life are lifelong. So anyway, thank you for watching today. Please press the like and the subscribe button. 
If you'd like to donate to the channel, you don't have to. But if you would like to donate or contribute to the channel, you can always find the link in the description box. There's something I want to bring to your attention before I draw the video to a close. I've launched a new free community forum on the membership website. It's open for everyone to use, to build, expand and connect to fellow survivors. I'm looking at the longevity of the forum as I should have created one when I first launched the membership site. I'm also running one-to-one -one sessions. If you want tailor-made advice and me to shed some light on your issues, you can always reach out. The Empath group meeting is coming up on the 28th and there is a new WhatsApp and Telegram group created for survivors to stay in touch. Lastly, if you want crisis email support and a plan of action, the links for all I've mentioned are in the description box below and there's a video that I want you to check out narcissist crazy obsession shift when they start idolizing you again so anyway that video should come up here I'll be back with another video soon peace